presentation it's actually on so the presentation is on plastic pollution on reduced reuse and recycle but i wanted you guys to watch a quick video before we started so it's we don't want to have a copy and paste this right oh my god it's not a long video. oh i can copy and paste i was wondering if something went wrong so let me just watch the quick video that's what i put the video up but i can't find it so Give me a moment, guys. I'm so sorry. I should have made the video available already. So we just it goes into the water. What goes into the water? All right. So just give me a moment, guys. So we're going to watch a video first. I'm just make it load up properly on plastic pollution do you guys what do you guys know about plastic pollution or just plastics overall or even just pollution have you guys ever been exposed or to um learning it yes no yes yes no maybe so. yes no maybe so yes yeah, don't need to be shy you know we've been with each other for a week you know guys this is no time to be shy I have learned about pollution. I've learned about air pollution. Uh, I learned about water pollution. That's good. Okay, so let's hold on. We'll also share this with this. I just want this to pause and make sure we're on the best quality as possible so you guys can see. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen now. Okay, so I'll put some full screen. Everyone can see the, the um the YouTube video, right? Everyone yes, yes. okay then that's good. Exactly. Let me take I can't hear. Yes. I can't hear. I can't hear. Um, it's turned up as loud as possible. What? What did you say? I said it can't turn off anymore, so I don't know. Um, maybe it's on your side. Maybe you need to turn up your um. Maybe your I can't because you're sharing screen right now and you're on you turn off. Did you share your computer sound? What? You guys can't hear what's going on. Cause I can't hear neither. So you're not hearing it clear right now. I can't exit the full. Okay, so it's okay. We're just going to probably just skip the video and let's go into the lecture since you guys can hear. Hold on, you probably need to check. Hold on. Wait, no, it's giving me some technical. Maybe I don't know what's going on. I have to share the computer. So oh, shoot. Do you have to share the computer? So yes, right. So that's how it goes. Please excuse my sister who doesn't know how to use the computer. I'm still learning how to use Zoom, you know. Sorry guys, I apparently didn't share my computer so I'm so sorry. Okay, let's start. Yes, I, I turned up my volume up to 100. Uh, okay, now I can hear. This is the story of No, three... it's my fault. I didn't share my computer sound before, so let's begin. Plastic bottles, empty and Here discarded. Their journeys are about to diverge with outcomes that impact nothing less than the fate of the planet. But they weren't always. Everyone's here, right? Yes, me. Okay, good. It's this way. To understand where these bottles end up, we must first explore their origins. The heroes of our story were conceived in this oil refinery. The plastic in their bodies was formed by chemically bonding oil and gas molecules together to make monomers. In turn, these monomers were bonded into long polymer chains to make plastic in the form of millions of pellets. Those were melted at manufacturing plants and reformed in molds to create the resilient material that makes up the triplets' bodies. Machines filled the bottles with sweet, bubbly liquid, and they were then wrapped, shipped, bought, opened, consumed, and unceremoniously discarded.
and now here they lie, poised at the edge of the unknown. Bottle one, like hundreds of millions of tons of his plastic brethren, ends up in a landfill. This huge dump expands each day as more trash comes in and continues to take up space. As plastics sit there being compressed amongst layers of other junk, rainwater flows through the waste and absorbs the water-soluble compounds it contains, and some of those are highly toxic. Together, they create a harmful stew called leachate, which can move into groundwater, soil, and streams, poisoning ecosystems and harming wildlife. It can take bottle one an agonizing 1,000 years to decompose. Bottle two's journey is stranger, but unfortunately no happier. He floats on a trickle that reaches a stream, a stream that flows into a river, and a river that reaches the ocean. After months lost at sea, he's slowly drawn into a massive vortex where trash accumulates, a place known as the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. Here, the ocean's currents have trapped millions of pieces of plastic debris. This is one of five plastic-filled gyres in the world's seas, places where the pollutants turn the water into a cloudy plastic soup. Some animals, like seabirds, get entangled in the mess. They, and others, mistake the brightly colored plastic bits for food. Plastic makes them feel full when they're not, so they starve to death and pass the toxins from the plastic up the food chain. For example, it's eaten by lanternfish. The lanternfish are eaten by squid. The squid are eaten by tuna. And the tuna are eaten by us. And most plastics don't biodegrade, which means they're destined to break down into smaller and smaller pieces called microplastics, which might rotate in the sea eternally. But Bottle 3 is spared the cruel purgatories of his brothers. A truck brings him to a plant where he and his companions are squeezed flat and compressed into a block. Okay, this sounds pretty bad too, but hang in there, it gets better. The blocks are shredded into tiny pieces, which are washed and melted so they become the raw materials that can be used again. As if by magic, Bottle 3 is now ready to be reborn as something completely new. For this bit of plastic with such humble origins, suddenly, the sky is the limit. Sorry guys, I just knew this. I didn't have on my mic. So as I said, I was saying, we're going back, we're going to plastic pollution and reduce, reuse and recycle. So plastic pollution and what are plastics? So plastics are a wide range of synthetic or semi-synthetic organic compounds that are malleable and can be molded into solid objects and they are synthetic mainly derived from petrochemicals so when it says malleable do you, you know plastics are we, we can see that plastics they are able to bend and take different forms and it's when we're saying that they're synthetic they're made up of like polymers and these polymers are a mass of different molecules that come together and it'll give plastic its different shape gives it um the different um characteristics that make up plastic that how it's bendy and all that Plastics are everywhere in our home, in our school, work, playgrounds, parks, and beaches. So the question is, if we have so many plastic pollution, why don't we just burn it, right? But when plastic is burned in the air, it actually releases... Ad.
Yes. It's bad. It's just going to pollute the air. Yeah, it's bad. Really bad. It actually releases a host of poisonous chemicals into the air, including dioxin, the most toxic substance known to science. Because a lot of times when these plas plastics are um, made to um give them like the clear, to make them clear or to make them be able to be like bendy or stuff like that, they are they use like lots of toxic chemicals and when you burn them or you leave them in the environment also times these chemicals might leach into other environment other ecosystems like in lakes and ponds and they cause damage to the animals and other things that are in the environment so dioxins are found throughout the world in the environment and they accumulate in the food chain mainly in the fatty tissues of animals and these dioxins are highly toxic and can cause reproductive development problems and also they can damage our immune systems. Okay, so did you know that the word plastic is derived from the Greek word plastikos, meaning the capable of being shaped or molded? And this is something that you'll find very common throughout science as a lot of these words are derived from Greek terms or terminologies. So why do we use plastic? It's because of its cost, it's flexible, lightweight, moisture resistant, it is easy to manufacture and it's versatile. Compared to other um, things that we use to store food, it's more, um, it's actually cheaper to produce and it actually burns less fossil fuels. And it's actually, in, as I said, more, it's more resistant and more durable. durable. So how long does certain plastic take to decompose? I think if you remember from the video, it said that you guys are watching, it says that certain plastic takes up to a thousand years to um, decompose. That is like forever. A thousand years is a long time, guys. So as you're seeing right here, the apple core takes two months to decompose. But then you will have, and then a plastic bag is like 10 to 20. But then something like a fishing line, takes up to 600 years to decompose and all of these plastic that's that's, the, that's a lot that's the that's even more than plastic but yes that's a lot of time for something to take to decompose in the environment i remember that we use plastics in everyday life we use them for everything who knows so, miss who knows today some fishing line just might be that just might have finished biodegrading after 600 years okay It's um, like that plastic again. Yeah, they so were all of fish. Yeah, so this is also cartoon plastic again. Yeah, we're all they were also fish. So this is um just wanted to show you guys how much plastics really affect not just us but our marine life. A lot of our because I think I remember the STEM activity that we did last week. Can you guys remember which um uh, marine in um species is that is endangered, that I said, due to plastic pollution and the mistake plastics for jellyfish you guys remember which um which animal i said it was anybody well if you don't, it's what Ms. Um, last, said. Week when, last week when we did our stand activity i said that one of jamaica's um species is endangered due to a lot of plastic pollution and it tends to feed on plastic because it will mistake these plastic for jellyfish so anybody remembers the um species that i was talking about the animal the turtle Wait, yes, wait, the hot turtles? Yeah, the turtles. They tend to mistake um the hot turtle. Turtle. Yeah. Not just the hobby, but those turtles overall. I didn't think you were going to remember the specific turtles, but yes. So plastic pollute our oceans and sea, and garbage has been discarded into our oceans for as long as humans have sailed the seven seas. Because plastic was only invented in like in the last hundred years, but especially in I think we they've said we've had the sea is um, polluted with over eight billion um plastic, and in from just 2016 alone, we probably con contributed just about three million about about that. So you know, every year they're saying about by 2050, the amount of plastic that we have produced is going to 
double, not double, uh, sorry, quadruple. So it's going to be four times the amount of plastic that we're going to find. In this, this, why don't you just make a substitute for plastic? Um, because um, the plastic, even though it's very dangerous to our environment, there's a lot of other things that we could use as um substitute, but those would also have other environmental factors on the other cause other environmental yes, problems. Why do these people make more biodegradable? By the example, um, you know the, like, the as bath soon as that they that go in the water, they just start biodegrading yeah. and fish can eat so, them. Like for example, Jumaine, the bags that we currently use now, we don't use plastic bags when we go to the supermarket now, but those bags actually take up more fossil fuel and energy than actually to make the plastic bags themselves. So, they're saying but that in order yes. to actually to actually reap the benefits of using one of those bags, you'd have to use it like at least 10,000 times to actually make up for the amount of energy and resources from the earth that you use just to make those bags. So even though we, you know, we're, we don't really use plastic bags in Jamaica anymore, those bags can't take up a lot of resources just as much. So you know, it's kind of trying to weigh the good versus evil in the whole situation about plastic pollution. Wait, I mean, so why don't you just make bi more biodegradable plastic? Like, as soon as they go in the water or something, fish can like fish can eat them. Like those plastic. As I was saying, it's them. the same thing. Even though these um these things are more able to, they're able to last a longer time. It takes more resources than what just producing plastic would require. Because remember, we have a lot of environmental pro um, problems, you know, like deforestation. So just to make these um, bags that are renewable and reusable, they take up more resources such as trees compared to if you just like use a plastic bag. So that's why. I remember that plastics is also um, a lot of food that um, we eat. It actually produces gases. Like especially food that is um that we throw away actually produce like dangerous gas called methane. So that's how so that's why sometimes we'll keep things that are food in plastic bags. So, you know, though methane is very dangerous to the environment and to our lungs and it cause um it can cause heart and lung issues. And also, you know, that it's kind of also difficult to replace plastic because a lot of food packaging that we do involves plastic as well so it's kind of it's kind of hard to just replace it just like that so plastic kills animals so about hundred thousand animals such as dolphins turtles whales penguins are killed every year due to plastic bags many animals ingest plastic bags and like that. Take them for food and therefore die and worse, the ingested plastic bags remain intact even after the death and decomposition of the animal. Thus, it lies in the landscape where another victim may ingest it. So a lot of times, they'll, these animals then ingest the plastic bags and they'll think that they're full enough, but they're actually not full. They're actually still hungry. And these, these bags, they just keep, they stay in the animals even after they're dead. And then other animals will eat them and then there's just an accumulation of plastic in the environment and in these animals. Hey, miss, miss. Yes? Miss, like one time I, w I went fishing, you know? Mm -hmm. And then, and then some of my daddy friends and me went fishing. And then um, then one of his friends, one of my dad's friends, he was trying to catch a fish. And yes. the fish actually burst the line. Mm -hmm. The fish burst the line. Wow, yeah. Yeah. Oh, miss, one time I actually saw a fish, miss. One time I saw a fish, like a green fish, like a huge fish, Miss Gordon. I mean, miss. Miss. Uh, it's like, it's bigger, well, it's longer than a flat screen TV. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was really big. Oh, miss, and I actually caught a snapper one time. Okay, that's good. So, all right, we're going to continue on. So, turtles. So, jellyfish are turtles' favorite food, but turtles can't tell the difference, as we were saying before, between a jellyfish and floating plastic bag. So, they also ingest these ropes and styrofoam and plastic equipment, and they'll 
mistakenly think that they're hungry. Also another um, animal that also will, that tends to be a victim of these plastic bags are also the seabirds as well. They sometimes, especially the colorful bags like the red and the brown, they'll mistake them for zooplankton or other um, small marine life species and they'll eat them. And as I will say again, they'll get, you know, sometimes they even get trapped in some of these bags, at these plastic bags, and then they, they get stuck and they become prey for other animals. So coral reefs. So pesticides from land is carried on plastic and affect coral reproductive and sewage. It is carried on plastic to the sea and it introduced. Miss, how do plastic pathogen. sink? Shouldn't they flow? Um, some of them will flow, but some will sink. I guess it depends on the density. And also times the these plastic they'll you know, um, for the coral reefs, it's very important that they get sunlight. So a lot of times the plastic will block the sunlight and they're not able to reproduce and grow efficiently due to the, the plastic as well. And as we were saying, as I said earlier, also these plastics, when they're getting manufactured, they use a lot of chemicals such as diatoxin and PCBs. So these things are very, um, when they go into the environment and they reach into the environment, it becomes very dangerous and toxic to the it's environment. It's 10.30. I watch this, it's 10.30.